Good morning. morning. Welcome. We gather in the Lord's house today to receive his gifts, to hear his word, and uh, beautiful passages this morning about how the Lord hides things and how we find those things. So uh, we follow along in the bulletin today for our first hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. So stand up. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army he shall lead. Till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. Stand forth in mighty conflict in this his glorious day. Let all his faithful serve him against a numbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. Ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor. Each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls for danger, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the din of battle, the next the big Song. The soldiers overcoming the crown of life shall see, and with the King of glory shall reign eternally. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. For his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is God who executes judgment. 
We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. At the set time that I appoint, for not from the east or from the west, but I will declare it forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It is God who executes judgment. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord of grace and mercy, teach us by your Holy Spirit to follow the example of your Son in true humility, that we may withstand the temptations of the devil and with pure hearts and minds avoid ungodly pride. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, is from Proverbs chapter 25. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into court, for what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Argue your case with your neighbor himself and do not re reveal another's secrets, lest he who hears you bring shame upon you and your ill repute have no end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear the Lord, you his saints. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. 
The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 13. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angel unaware. Remember those who are in prison, as those in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat, for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and the Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place. So when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. This is the gospel of the Lord. The congregation may be seated. We invite the children to come forward for the children's message. <clears throat> Good morning. You're not so sure today, huh? How are we all doing today? Good, good, good. So we had 
Proverbs 25, 2 today. It is the glory of God to conceal things. What does it mean to conceal? I don't know. Somebody know what the word conceal means? Gabriel, do you know what it con To conceal is to hide something. So, let's see. What could we hide? Could we hide Nate? Nate, do you want to hide somewhere? All right, Nate wants... You, you're you're ready to hide? hide this. You're going to hide your bow? Let's see. So Hannah's earrings are concealed by her hair right now. They're still there, right? But we can't see them because her hair's covering over them. But sometimes people hide something on, on purpose, right? Um, so if you wake up and you don't have time to comb your hair, you don't have time to clean, you can put a hat on, you cover your bad hair, right? You could conceal things that way. Why do you think God, it says it's the glory of God to conceal things. What is God hiding? And why is it glorious that God is hiding something? I think the proverb means God's hiding things all around the world. That he has things hidden away that he wants you to find, right? Do you guys like to play hide and seek? How much fun is it when you're playing hide and seek? It's a lot of fun. When you finally find somebody and they jump up, that's a lot of fun, isn't it? Well, God hides things throughout the world for us to find. There are things that they don't make sense to us. And then suddenly we're praying or we're just going through life and we realize God put that there for me. He had hidden it there and I got there and it's his gift to me. Ta-da! That's pretty cool. So it's the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings to search them out. Proverbs is written by a king to a, a son that will someday be a king, and he's saying, hey, you, I want you to learn to search out God's things. And then he says this, as the heavens for height and the earth, the depths of the heart of kings is unsearchable. So he's talking about searching in both cases, right? God hides things, and we're supposed to search for them, but... The heart of the king is unsearchable. Now, do you have a king? We don't have a king, right? We have God. God's our king. That's true. Jesus is our king. But we, we had many years before the people in America overthrew their king. And now we have presidents, right? And they don't have nearly as long that they get to be in office as a king does. But you do have somebody who's in authority over you. More than one person, Right? Who's in charge of you that you have to obey? God. That's one. Think closer to earth. Parents. Your parents, right? No. You have to obey your parents. Now, sometimes are your parents' hearts as unsearchable as the heart of a king? Like your parent says, don't do this. And you say, I don't get that. I don't understand why I was told I don't get to do that, right? Does that happen sometimes? I mean, some of my kids are up here, and every command I give to you makes total sense, right? You're like, I'm glad you told me that. That made a lot of sense. Now that you've explained it to me, I will know how to behave the right way. That's the reaction, right? No. no. Do sometimes a parent say, I don't want you to do this. Don't play in the street. And like, but it's fun playing out in the street. No. The person who's in authority has to see the big picture, right? They have to think, okay, where would Michael be safe to play and where would he not be safe to play? And is that always obvious to you, Michael? It is always obvious to you, right? I don't know. Sometimes when we're kids, we don't see the big picture yet, right? Because we're little. So Proverbs is saying, look, you're not always going to understand why somebody who's in charge of you tells you what to do. But you don't have to understand it, right? We love our parents, and so we obey our parents. We trust that our parents are watching out for us, right? So the same way, Hannah was already there, right? Who else do we obey? God, right? We know that there are things that don't make sense to us that God's doing right now, but he's hidden things away. He wants us to find the good things he's hidden for us. So just like we trust our parents 
They're watching out for us, even if we don't always understand it. Watch for what God is doing. Look for it. Search it. Seek it out. It's a glory when we play hide-and-seek with what God's doing for us in life. So when God says, don't do this, sometimes you go, oh, come on, God. Why did you command that? But we know he's hidden good things for us, and he cares about us and is watching out for us. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we give thanks that we get to be your children. Give us hearts that even when we don't understand, we rejoice to obey you because we know you are good to us. You see the big picture more than anybody else can. And you're watching out for us. Give us hearts that are like a king that wants to search out your good gifts hidden in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Eden has children bulletins for those of you guys who want them. We'll go back to our seats and we'll sing our next hymn. Trust will be peace and mercy to you from the Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus, who gives us rest. Amen. Our text is from Hebrews, excuse me, from the gospel, go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move higher up. Well, Jesus didn't just advise this path of humility. He walked it, and he walked it more fully than anyone else ever could. It's not just that Jesus was despised and rejected by men. Not just that he was made a spectacle outside the city. 
while he was being crucified, they mocked him. So he was as humiliated as any man could be. But no one else could travel that low because Jesus is not just man. He is fully God and fully man. He starts as high as you could start to go as low as you could go. He is the only begotten of the Father. He deserves all glory and honor. In heaven, the angels praise and honor him. And he could have just stayed up there listening to them saying, yeah, you are the one. You are the Son of God. So he went as low as he could go, but no one could travel that far. From as high as he went to as low as he went. So he didn't just eat with tax collectors and sinners. He took on their sins. He takes on our sins. He took on the sins of the people who were yelling at him for hanging out with tax collectors and sinners. And through it all, Jesus didn't defend himself, right? He didn't say, oh, you got it wrong. Let me set you straight. He didn't defend his reputation by attacking back. He didn't defend his body from the crown of thorns that they put on his head, from being stripped naked, nailed to a cross, just having to hang there in humiliation. He gave, and he gave all of that in love. No one takes my life from me, he says in John, but the Son of Man lays it down for you. So he took his seat at the lowest place, and what did he do? He waited for the great host, the host whose table has every blessing upon it, whose blessings never run out. He waited for that host to lift him up. And he waited to the point of death, three days in the tomb. The Father did raise up Jesus, and now every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. For those who would insist on being Jesus' enemies, they will still have to say that he is Lord, and it will break them to bow on the last day. But for those who love the Lord, this will be our joy forevermore. To praise him, to know that he is worthy of that praise. And he invites us to join in that worthiness through his forgiveness. That will be joy for us to sing all glory, laud, and honor to him forever and ever. And to know that we will never run out of time or praise. That we will be able to give him his due. So all of that shows the fulfillment of Jesus' very practical teaching on where to sit at a party. Where to sit at a party is what Jesus chose to do for all of us. And that also sets the table for what we're going to talk about with the remainder of the sermon. Because our readings talk about how we treat leaders, what we owe our leaders. And as a society, there's an irony to this. That on the one hand, our culture prizes leadership. So much so that we often end up with a lot of leaders and no followers. I searched the word leader an online bookseller. You can do the same thing if you want. Go to one of those places that sell books online. Type in leader. Over 12,000 results for books about what it is to be a leader. And I searched follower. They're a little bit over 600. Let's do the math on this. For every trained follower, we'll have 20 trained leaders. Do we have this backwards? You look at those books, you oftentimes see a list of qualities that the leader needs to have in order to be able to get people to follow him. Confidence. Assertiveness. Poise. Direction. Drive for achievement. They're good qualities. You've got a leader who has those qualities, it's easier to follow that leader. When you're picking which of the 20 am I going to follow, right? Now let me ask you this. When Jesus was on the cross, do you think he looked confident? Did he look assertive? Did he have poise? Did it look like he had set his own direction? Was he achieving the goal that he had set? 
Now, there's a way, as Christians, we know we can answer yes to every single one of those questions. Right? Jesus had the confidence of faith. That even if everybody else in the world is going to say that he's a blasphemer, he deserved to die, that the Father knew better and would make things right. And he actually chose that path of suffering. Right? He was on the path that he had chosen. He was achieving our salvation. And he had a spiritual poise that allowed him, even in all the pain, with all of the absurdity of the mocking that was going on, he could still say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was leading, but his leadership started with following. Following the path that he read laid out in scriptures. That the Christ would suffer and die and only on the third day rise again. It was a path of waiting on the Father to make it all turn out right. For that hidden path to suddenly come through almost inexplicably, except that he had prophesied it in the Scriptures all along, to glory. That path of humiliation that turns out to be the only way to be exalted. So here's another question as we think about leadership and leaders. How many leaders get to practice a pure kind of leadership where nobody else is above them and tells them what to do, but they're the boss over all the other bosses and they alone get to say, this is the way, I've set the course, y'all follow me. Don't most leaders have somebody else over them that they have to follow? Or they give a pattern that says, this is how our franchise is going to do it. You're king of that franchise, but this is the way we all do it. I think if we dig deep enough, look, there's only one five-star general, right? Then even the five-star general has somebody over him. And in our way of doing government, even the president is accountable to the electorate. So I think if we dig deep enough, we realize that the best leaders lead well because they follow well. And people can follow them because they are followers who are confident in those who are over them. I want to talk about what it means to follow. Since we've found a market inefficiency, lots more things to be said about leaders than followers. In fact, as Christians, shouldn't this be our place? We all say we're disciples of God. To be a disciple means you're a follower. We're a follower of Jesus. We've got good leaders here in our church. Thank God for the good leaders that we've got. And every one of our good leaders here is good because they are followers of Jesus. Our epistle reading ends with a few words about how to treat these leaders. It talks about obedience and submission. It says, let them do this with joy, not with groaning, because that would be of no advantage to you. Now think through what he just said there. The things we do so that our leaders will be joyful are of advantage to us, because they're going to lead either way. Do you want a leader who says, I'm glad to be here to serve these people and to lead them? Or do you want a leader who's beset groaning and says, well, let's see if I can get these people to do what I want them to do. I'll think about it in the smallest of terms. Let's imagine we, we all band together. We start a softball league. Oh, boy. We've just, just enough people to have a good softball league. Uh, the people who are in charge of the softball league, they're going to have to have multiple roles because we just don't have enough, right? We're going to have to have the, the coaches are also going to be the umpires, and they're going to play double duty that way. But you know what? While we're playing, we have a good time. We have fun. We thank the people who are serving as coaches and as umpires. We may not agree with every call, but we make sure at the end of the day we say thank you for what you've done. It's good competition. In good spirit, we thank the people who lead, and we all go home happy. Now let's imagine another league where everyone is constantly arguing calls, saying you didn't get it right. And when a coach gives you a tip to hold the bat differently, roll your eyes, say, I don't know, I was watching the YouTube video, I know how to do this. I don't need you coaching me. Competition is angry and foul and complaining. 
And how long is it until you can't recruit new leaders? And you're out there begging, please, we need someone to coach. We don't know if you'd actually be any good at it, but we need somebody. We need a warm body. We're desperate to fill this role. Now let me ask another question. How many of these softball leagues still exist? And how many of these organizations, the bowling leagues, the scouting troops, how many of them have closed down because you can't get anybody to lead them anymore? And we just don't have them anymore. How many of the organizations that we had 20 years ago in Shelby County are still here? And of the ones that are still here, how many of them are hobbling to find leaders who will take a thankless role to get yelled at by the people who say, well, it's my right to tell them they're not coaching me the right way. They got all those calls wrong and they were umpiring. 12,000 books, the word leader in the title. Guess what? We add ship to the end of leader. 18,000 books. And I can go on Shelby County Facebook groups and find we're desperate. We're not going to be able to have this part of the scout troop if we don't get somebody to stand up and be a leader. How can we have so many books on leaders and no leaders? We know the problem. Let's get back to what the scriptures say. Obey and submit, Hebrews taught. Take the lower seat, Jesus taught. It's the same idea. A willingness to say, all right, I'm going to humble myself. I may know better, but you've actually taken the time to step up into that leader role. So I'm going to make sure that you have a good time in that leader role. That you rejoice. Even if you aren't doing it the perfect way that I know, and I could tell you, I'm just going to sit on that. I'm going to thank God that you've stepped up. I'm going to make sure you enjoy having stepped up. I'm going to follow your vision. And we're going to do something together. The first rule of followership is love your leaders. Love your leaders as yourself. Love them and show them that love. Because this love is to our advantage, right? As he said, it'll be to our advantage when they're joyous in that role. That's the way love works. Love is to our advantage. I get the fruit of the labors of the entire group. And it may not be exactly the way I wanted it, but we did it together. And we were more together having done it together. Love your leaders. Don't just sit on the sidelines and grumble that the leader hasn't called on you yet. Say, all right, I'm going to try and see their vision. I'm going to see what they're doing. I'm going to find a way to jump in at the very bottom. And if I'm helping at the very bottom, maybe they're going to call me up to a higher spot and put me more in their council and explain to me that thing that's the glory of kings to hide things, to say, you don't yet see the whole big picture, but I'm going to show a little bit more to you. Now, I know why this is hard. We've all had bad leaders, right? We've had corrupt and foolish leaders. We've had people in charge of those groups that we had 20 years ago who were sneaking money out the side of the pot. We've had leaders that we trusted and they let us down hard. And that makes following another leader hard to do. So we turn again to Jesus because he faced that too. The religious leaders who were supposed to know the Bible the best and be ready to greet the Messiah, that was what Judaism was about, waiting for the Messiah to finally come. And those religious leaders who were supposed to be there, he's here, yay, rejoice, the leader has come. Instead, they're like, oh, we're pretty sure he's the one, but we're jealous, so we're going to lie about him. Put him on trial. And Pilate, Pilate's sitting there, he questions him. He's like, yeah, he's innocent. I'm going to wash my hands instead of just saying he's innocent. And the apostles, Jesus trained them. He told them again and again. He said, look, the scriptures say that Christ is going to be rejected. He's going to suffer. He's going to die. And then he's going to rise again on the third day. And once the rejection and the suffering starts, the apostles are just like, I'm out. So Jesus, he knew what it was like to be disappointed by bad leaders. 
But he didn't look at the bad leaders because it's the glory of God to conceal things. And hidden in bad leadership is God's hand working through the corruption of this world in a hidden way, inviting us to seek as he's hiding, ready to go, I was here all along. Jesus watched for the Father who did not fail him. And God was true to his word and raised Jesus up. And now Jesus is king above all kings, given all authority in heaven and earth. And Jesus, given that authority, still acts as your servant and will not fail you either. He continues to work through corrupt authorities on earth to bring blessings. See, our submission to earthly leaders, it's all about our trust, not in those leaders. The Lutheran Church does not say, obey your earthly leaders because the earthly leaders are great. We've never had better earthly leaders. It says, we obey the earthly leaders because we trust that Jesus is hiding in their work. And we trust that Jesus will make things right. And that even if we bear shame and dishonor in this world, what does Hebrews say? Let's go to the outside of the camp. Let's bear the reproaches that he bore. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is yet to come. See, brothers and sisters, the ways we speak about our earthly leaders, the ways we submit, instead of trying to overthrow, these are all confessions of our faith. Just as Jesus stood before Pilate and made the good confession, my kingdom is not of this world, he said two things there, right? And when sometimes we don't see the second thing, it might be hiding from us. The first thing is, Pilate, I'm not your rival. I'm willing to submit to you. And I think we get that one. But there's another thing hidden in that statement, my kingdom is not of this world, that's saying, Pilate, there's nothing you can do to stop my kingdom coming. My kingdom abides. It's not of this world, but it is in this world. Here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is yet to come. And when that city and that kingdom comes in its fullness and is no longer hiding and every knee is bowed, all the reproaches of the citizens who submit, they're going to be whisked away. We'll forget them completely. The Lord himself will come and to you personally say, Friend, Time to move higher up. I'm putting you in a seat that no one will move you from. Come and feast with me forever. And in the meantime, brothers and sisters, it's hide and seek time. God's kingdom is not asleep. Just waiting for the last day, going, you guys work out the mess until I'm ready to come back. No. It's hiding. And by faith, we can find it. And we can glory in the ways that God is still working even evil to good. See, this kingdom that will not end, it's not in competition with the kingdom of this world. It's too great. It's too big for that. The kingdoms of the world, they're going to fight over who gets to be wearing the big hat for a year. And they'll change next year. But the biggest hat, the crown of thorns that has become a crown of glory. It's never moving. And grace upon grace, in Jesus' kingdom, there are disciples hidden in every tribe and nation. By faith, let's find it and rejoice in it. Because we have a leader who is a servant still. And a leader who does take great joy in you and your salvation. Christ the Lord who says, friend, come on up. I'll praise to him. One Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise to confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, through the humiliation of your Son, you have called us to a place at your heavenly table. Teach us to treasure this place of honor. And so spurn the foolish honors of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, our shepherd, sustain the pastors of your church in their sacred charge. We pray especially for Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Bardstown, Kentucky, and we pray for Pastor Fossil serving them. Establish them in your stead. Make their life of faith worthy of all honor and imitation, and inspire their hearers to honor you by honoring them. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, at the creation of Adam and Eve, you instituted and blessed marriage as the lifelong union of a man and a woman, and you commanded that it be held in honor by all as a sacred sign of Christ and his bride, the church. Grant your blessing, therefore, to all husbands and wives, to all who have pledged themselves to be united in holy matrimony according to your word, that their lives together in your name may be sanctified by your Holy Spirit in all wisdom, purity, self-sacrifice, and love. Lord, in your mercy. God of justice, you exalt the humble and humble the proud in your own appointed time. We commend to you the elected officials of our land. Grant them the desire to govern as though serving, and give them wisdom and courage to know what is right, and then to follow it. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, grant peace and healing according to your will to the sick, the suffering, those troubled in mind, those suffering depression, those with chronic illness and pain, those who have asked for our prayers, Becky, Tammy, Janice, Marianne, Barb, Emily, Fred, Mark, Joni, Jim, Debbie, Luella, Dottie, Brad, Raymond, Roger, Jason, Betty, Todd, Charlotte, Charlie, Ruth, Dave, Don, Alicia, Kathy, Ronald, Don, Elizabeth, Scott, Gil, Brad, Douglas, Sandy, Victoria, Charlie, Susan, Fred, Debbie, Tammy, Kevin, Jordan, Melissa, Artemio, Dominic, Vicky, and Bobby. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you call on us to practice brotherly love, to show hospitality to strangers, to remember all those in need. We come to you confident that you will not leave us nor forsake us, but will grant us all that we need for this body and life. Bestow on us the full riches of your grace for all the situations and circumstances in which your people dwell. Lord, in your mercy. Remembering that here we have no abiding city, but that heaven is our home. Give us your aid that we may, by true faith and godly life, prepare for the coming of our Savior, multiplying your mercy by loving our neighbor in need and loving you with all our body, soul, strength, and will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen.
what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows in the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Grant we beseech you, Almighty God, into your church, your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which comes down from above, that your word as becomes it may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people. That in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. The love of Christ proclaim Till all the world adore His sacred name Come, Christians, follow Where our captain trod Our King in victorious Christ, the Son of God. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim till all the world adore His sacred name. Let on their way by this triumphant sign, the host of God in conquering ranks combine. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim to all the world. His sacred name. All newborn soldiers of the crucified bear on their brows the seal of him who died. Lift high the cross. The love of Christ proclaim Till all the world adore His sacred name O oh, Lord once lifted On the glorious tree As 
for now our host promised to draw us all to thee. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred name. Lives from death and hell Lift high the cross The love of Christ proclaim Till all the world Adore His sacred name So shall our song of Try young beaver be praised the crucified for victory. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim till all the his sacred name. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We have a few announcements. We will be getting our uh, confirmation and uh, Lutheranism 101 classes started in mid-September on Wednesday nights. Uh, that means that the Zoom Bible class, which has been at the Wednesday night class uh, through the summer, we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do. Uh, so if you want to be a part of the discussion of whether or not we change dates or uh, if we move things back a little later in the evening or what we do with the Zoom Bible class, you can let me know now. We'll probably carve out a little bit of time to talk about it on Wednesday as well. So that class meets uh, both in person at Andy and Nancy's house, and everybody's welcome to come to Andy and Nancy's house, or uh, you can get online and you can have your screen turned off and be in your PJs uh, with your cup of tea and just uh, participate by Zoom. Either way, we're happy to have you. And we're going through the book of First Thessalonians, one of the first epistles that was written in the New Testament. So it's, uh, it's kind of true blazing the trail of how the scriptures of the New Testament are going to speak to God's people. And we've been enjoying getting to see what Paul is doing in that epistle, what the Holy Spirit is doing through that piece of scripture. Uh, other announcements people want to bring to our attention? Isaac. Okay, so we'll have a little bit of refreshment, some slides to show of uh, the time down in Houston for National Youth Gathering. We'd planned to do this sooner, but then when we got back from National Youth Gathering, like literally an hour after getting back, we got the notice that the person sitting next to me on the bus had COVID. And then I was kind of like, check my temperature. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and then we went into isolation. So we didn't... Uh, we didn't get to share it sooner like we wanted to, but we still want to give thanks to the congregation and, and share the, the National Youth Gathering. So Isaac and Max have a presentation for that, and there'll be some refreshments. Other announcements people want to bring to our attention? Dave? Yeah. <laughs> we want our leaders figuring out the mode to lead joyfully. <laughs> so, so, so pray for our pray for our mowing crew. Thank you, mowing crew and leaders, trustees. Uh, other announcements people have for us, Max.
Okay. Speaking of uh, events that have uh, slight adjustments, um, we talked about canoeing and kayaking on September 17th. I think that's a Saturday. Is that right? Which, which the, yes. So then we had some requests that we could do that on a Sunday after church instead. So now we're looking at that. So um, we're trying, we're still a little flexible on that canoe date. Um, so if you want to do it and you're like, wait, Saturday was good for me, let us know. Um, and if you're kind of thinking, yeah, canoeing, but Saturday wasn't going to work, Sunday would, let us know. We're going to get those dates nailed down here hopefully this upcoming week. Suzanne? Thank you, Suzanne. Other announcements people have for us? All right, God's blessings on your week. Uh, have we looked into one of